Okay, so we just recorded a podcast, which you guys will hear in a minute. But as soon as we finished like editing in it and getting getting it ready to send out, two major pieces of news broke. The first, I think, you know, for the Panthers fans, for for all of us, very exciting news. DJ Moore has been extended, Jerry, something you and I have been begging for. We hoped yes. it would happen last year when they decided to give the money to Robbie Anderson. It has happened now. Uh, it's a three-year deal, $61 million, I think, like 41 guaranteed. Maybe it's $63 million. Either yeah. way, it's around $60 million. I think his uh, his average pay for the next four years is going to be $18 million a year, yeah. which Johnson, honestly Johnson, is a steal. Jonathan Alexander of the Charlotte Observer says average is $18.25 million for the next four years. It yeah. puts him currently at eighth in the league for pay. Honestly, I think this is a great deal because by the time yeah. year two runs around, he's going to be 15, 16. And he's a he's a number one receiver. He's 1,200 yards total the past three seasons. You, what else do you expect from him? I mean, he's been doing yeah. this with Kyle Allen, a broken down Cam Newton, crappy Eddie Darnold. Yeah, yeah, P.J. Walker. Like, just look yeah. at his quarterbacks who's been throwing to him, and he's putting up good numbers. So... I love this. Yeah. I'm so uh, happy I'm, I'm, this news broke because. Yeah. yeah after- uh, this, this is a great deal. It's a great deal. Number one for the Panthers. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, he's going to be paid like a top 10 wide receiver and maybe numbers wise, he's not quite there, but he is that for us. Like he is our number one. Um, and honestly, with a good quarterback, he probably would be, he's got the top 10 talent. easily. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So this is, this is a good deal. I hope they start to use him a little differently next year, you know, incorporate some runs, you know, kind of like they did year one with him. Um, more like a Debo Samuel type style. I think he would be perfect for that and really would be dynamic. But even if he's just a receiver, he's great. And this is, this had to get done and I'm glad they did it. I'm just hoping that we get an O-line <laughs> and a good quarter, a, a decent quarterback that can get him the ball. I think that's been his biggest problem. I know you want to use him as Debo Samuel, but I think we should use Christian McCaffrey more in that role. Me personally, but uh, well, uh, we got two Debo Samuels. Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> but that being no, said, I, I agree with you. I, yeah, I, I think. Um, I mean, obviously, quarterback as as you'll hear in the podcast coming up, uh, big big need. But uh, yeah, this this is great. I'm, I'm I couldn't be happier. And he deserves it. He, this is a guy who's worked hard. You never hear him complain out there. I mean, and he has reasons to complain. Mm-hmm. With this oh, yeah. team and coaching and roster, but mm-hmm. you always see him fight. I don't expect him to Robbie Anderson this season. Once he got that big contract, it seems like he didn't care. I expect yeah. DJ Moore to continue on and continue to get a thousand yard seasons. I mean, yep. I'm glad we wrapped him up. Next is Brian Burns. Since we have this extra money, let's 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 get take care of the guys who've worked for it. Agreed. Yep. Um, good start. Good start mm-hmm. by locking up your guys. Um, you know, Burns is next, Chin in a couple of years. I mean, you mm-hmm. know, good base, and this is a good deal. The other piece of news that we received, I mean, seconds ago almost, Deshaun Watson has made a decision. Now, as you'll hear later in the episode, at, you know, at the time we recorded that two hours ago, it seemed like it was down to the Falcons and the Saints. He has decided to go to the Cleveland Browns. You know, he told the Cleveland Browns he was he they were out. He, they were the first one that were out. Yeah. He Uno reversed it. <laughs> well, well, so he's getting a 5 down Jerry. Jerry. He's getting a 5-year, 230 million fully guaranteed contract extension. And I think that's that's oh, probably yeah. what did it. Oh, that I mean, is that's, definitely That's the only reason. I think what happened is the Cleveland Browns tried to get Baker Mayfield to get back, and his agent was like, no, after you did what you did, Baker Mayfield dirty that way, we're done with you. You know, we're not going to – he's not going to come in training camp. You could go ahead and trade him. And they're like, no, no, don't trade him. And did they realize, oh, he's not joking? Then they went with this full and guaranteed. And congratulations to Cleveland Strip Club because Deshaun Watson's going to have a lot of money out there. Yeah, I wonder if if Baker's going to be included in the trade. Um, I, you would almost have to, right? Yeah, I, I, I'm really interested to see what the trade is going to be. But man, that is a lot of money. All all he wanted from the Panthers reportedly 
was the third and fourth year guaranteed. This is way more than that. A fully guaranteed. I mean, remember when Kirk Cousins signed that 90 million fully guaranteed contract mm-hmm. and everybody went crazy? This is $230 million fully guaranteed. This is more fully guaranteed than Mahomes is getting. Almost close to a quarter billion dollars. Think about that. Quarter of a billion. For a guy with so many questions, uh, is, is he is he even going to play this year? Like We yeah. don't even know if he's going to play this year. He, the first year of his contract, he may not even play. Uh, you know, it's wow. Wow is correct. And it's good news for Panthers. Now we're not going to have, I would, I later on in the podcast, when you listen to it, because we recorded that earlier, I mean, mm-hmm. it was literally going to be posted four minutes. It, it, it was all your schedule. Yeah. So I had to stop that. But with that being said, like, that's insane. It's, we don't have to deal with him either. Yeah. I mean, we, we may play him what, once every four years or something, whenever the schedule comes around. This is the best case scenario, in my opinion. Yes. We don't have to give up everything for him, and he's not in our division. Th- this is this is perfect. Yeah. As Panthers fans, honestly, we couldn't have asked for anything more other than him not to have all the sexual assault allegations and come here. That, that would be the only thing better. This exactly. This is pretty good. Yeah. A- absolutely. Yeah. All right, I have nothing else to say because I was in the middle of mowing my lawn when you were texting me. So uh, yeah, well, enjoy la- the rest of the podcast, everyone. <laughs> and, uh, if, and when if you hear not, our despair, just remember, yeah, that's why doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and like and subscribe on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And we are here to discuss the end of the Carolina Panthers' pursuit of Deshaun Watson. Uh, will not be coming to the Carolina Panthers. He has not, as of 1.23 p.m. on Friday, chosen which team he wants to go to. But he has chosen to not come to the Carolina Panthers, Jerry. Yeah, and when you said 22 times, I thought that's how many times Deshaun Watson has rejected this organization. Because, <laughs> I mean, they pursued him last uh, midseason, got rejected. They tried it in the offseason, they got rejected. They got tried again. I mean, he doesn't want to come here. It's okay. No. It's okay. It, it's a mixed feeling for me. On a football aspect, I'm not looking forward to seeing him twice a year. He's a great quarterback. Um, I was kind of hoping to see him with CMC, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson. I think that would have been a fun little offense. But what it would have cost, I don't know if it would have really put this team into a playoff aspect. I mean, he didn't lift the Houston Texans to deep in the playoffs. And you're talking about getting rid of your key defensive playmakers to trade for him and your first round picks for three years. And possibly more. You know, um, there were some reports coming around that said that the offer to Houston was three first round picks, multiple mid round picks. So no idea what those picks were, how many burns and chin. Okay. Um, That's too much in my opinion Uh, for Deshaun Watson, given the baggage, right? Deshaun Watson, the player. Okay. Probably worth that. I mean, Deshaun Watson, he's a really good football player. He's a really good quarterback. He's got everything you would want off the field. That's where the problems come in. And, you know, there was a report today that came out from Jonathan Alexander, Joe person also that said the Panthers were asked by Deshaun Watson's group, if he would, or if they would guarantee the third and fourth years of his contract, essentially like $64 million, which would essentially have, have guaranteed his entire contract. The Panthers were not willing to do that. Now there's some questions as to, was that a serious request from Deshaun Watson's people or were they trying to leverage that guarantee from the Panthers to the saints or Falcons? Um, or were, you know, was David Tepper just like, Hey, we're already giving up this much for you. There are question marks. If we guarantee this money to you and something does happen down the line criminally, or he is, you know, accused in civil court or, or found guilty in civil court of these accusations and the NFL decides to, come down with the hammer on him and he's going to miss a season or more, then you're on the hook for that money. So 
at first when I saw that report, I was, I was kind of like outraged. I was, are you kidding me? You're already giving up all this for Deshaun Watson. You're not going to give up some money as well. But the more I think about it, I can understand why they would be hesitant to go that far. I get that, but if it was just to rise the price for New Orleans of Atlanta, <clears throat> why would you not do it at this point? I mean, well, what if he what if he said yes? Oh, I mean, what if what if then, I mean, then he he took I, that to Atlanta and and New Orleans and they said hell no, then he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to go to Carolina and make my money and then leave. Well, I mean, that's what he's he would have done anyways. I mean, potentially, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's just what it was. I like I said, I'm kind of glad it didn't go through. I think we were going to lose yeah. way too much. And if you make that trade, your team needs to be already ready to pursue like a championship mm-hmm. in my opinion. You're that missing piece. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we don't have the puzzle filled out except for that missing piece. We are missing like 3 quarters of the puzzle right now. I don't know about that much, but yeah, we're not we're not in <laughs> win now mode. We're not like plug in one piece and you're going to the Super Bowl. That that is not where the Panthers are. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. One thing I did want to mention is this is the second time the Panthers tried to trade for a franchise quarterback in the past two seasons, and this is year three, the year the rebuild is supposed to be pretty much done, and both times quarterbacks from the Detroit Lions and Houston Texans don't want to come here. I, will, mm-hmm. I hope David Tepper realizes that this franchise, the way he's running it, is, is in shambles. Players don't want to come here. Good players don't want to come here because of Matt Rule, the way this front office is being run, and because of what Tepper's been doing. He needs to really look in the mirror and kind of figure out, keep his hands off, let the football guys do their thing, and fire Matt Rule because... He's not doing good, but that's just another soapbox that we'll get on. Well, yeah, I mean, I think obviously Matt Rule is a problem. I don't know that in this particular case it would have mattered who we had as head coach. I I don't think Deshaun Watson wanted to come here. I think he wanted to go to New Orleans or he wanted to go to Atlanta, Atlanta being his home essentially. And New Orleans, you know, a guy like Deshaun Watson – probably could find some good stuff to do in New Orleans. Well, let's be honest. I, I don't necessarily, I think a big part of that is the dysfunction of the franchise. That's why he did not want to come here. I think that, play, that, that plays a part. Yeah. I, I don't think it's the nightlife and stuff that you. Oh no, I a hundred percent think that is the case. Though. Like, I think that is a part of it for Deshaun Watson. Honestly, I, I really do. Uh, I think he's that kind of guy. I, I think he's proven that he's that kind of guy. Like, let's be honest. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not going to blame Matt rule specifically for this failure. We can blame Matt rule for a lot of failures. And we have blamed Matt rule for a lot of failures over the last few seasons, couple seasons. Um, but this one, I'm not going to put solely on Matt rule. Now, did he play a part? Probably, but there was also a report that the Panthers reached out to Russell Wilson to see if he would potentially waive their no trade clause or his no trade clause for them. And he said, no. Yeah. He wasn't interested. So that's three. I didn't even know about that one. So yeah, yeah. It, it's going back to my, <clears throat> we are the franchise that no one wants to go to. What this front office needs to work on, instead of swinging for these franchise quarterbacks that are already established in the NFL, let's build a team. Yeah. Let's build a solid team, try to draft a quarterback, you know, maybe not this year, maybe next year, but mm-hmm. get get a stopgap quarterback, build a team that's playoff ready, that's a quarterback away, and then if you have to, if you didn't get that draftable franchise quarterback, then you try to make a push. Then you franchise the next two, three years of draft picks to bring in that guy. Instead of bringing in the draft guy or bringing in the franchise quarterback, hamstringing your next two, three years, where you're lucky to get the wild card playoffs, but you're not going any deeper with a franchise quarterback and no other pieces. Right. I mean, you look at what the Rams have done over the last several years, where they basically traded all, you know, a lot of their draft picks, all their first round draft picks to reinforce their team. They, that's not how they built their team, right? No, they're, they're, they're adding ammunition <clears throat> and they're doing it instead of through the draft, they're doing it through free agency and trades. Well, the Panthers aren't in that position. 
You know, they're not as good a team as the Rams were when they started doing that. The Panthers, and I do like, and we'll talk about free agent signings here in a few minutes. I really like what the Panthers have done this offseason in terms of adding free agents. I think they've done a good job. They haven't broken the bank, but I don't think they've spent money poorly, right? Correct. When it comes to quarterback, which is the big missing piece, <clears throat> I agree with you. I think uh, you, you're going to have to get you're going to have to get lucky in the draft. Is that going to be this year? I don't know. I mean, there's really only a couple of guys I think that could come in and and have that super high ceiling in this draft. Could be wrong. You, you never know. You know, there's fourth and fifth round guys sometimes that pop, uh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. all right. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, Russell Wilson. I mean, <clears throat> Tom Brady. Yeah. I mean, those guys. Even Dak Prescott. Even though I think he's mm-hmm. you know a twelve to fifteen type of quarterback. I mean, those guys you can find, and they weren't yeah. expected to do much, but you can find them. It's just harder. Yeah, I mean, you know, those guys are out there, and but you have to get lucky, right? Or or you have to. There's guys that when they're drafted in that round, there are question marks. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes it's up to the player to get better and to, you know, work at it, right? Like Russell Wilson, like Dak Prescott, you know, those guys have done. Tom Brady, you know, the ultimate example. But, um, yeah, I, and do I expect the Panthers to be able to identify a Tom Brady, this current regime of the Panthers? <laughs> no, no, I don't. Um, I fully expect... Well, let's let's talk about. I think we're done talking about Russell or uh, Deshaun Watson. Let's talk about maybe what the Panthers do next in terms of quarterback. Okay, there are some reports that the Panthers could be interested in Baker Mayfield from the Browns trading for him. Um, Derek Carr trading for him has been thrown around. Uh, Garner Minshew has been thrown around. Uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick has been thrown around, and then of course you have the option to draft a quarterback as well. So, you know, of those, you know, four or five different options there, Jerry, which one would you like to see and which one do you think is going to happen? Well, here's my thing. I don't really like trading for a quarterback right now, especially, okay, Baker Mayfield, no. Baker yeah. Mayfield's a better than Darnold quarterback, but he's still a mediocre quarterback. That's Agreed. And they're going to, Cleveland's going to want a lot for him. So no, he's a, yeah, he's for, you know number one pick just a few years ago. Exactly. So, so I would write him off. Um, Jimmy Garoppolo supposedly he's getting a lot of interest again. Mm. Another mediocre quarterback. We don't need to lose a lot for a mediocre quarterback. Who do you uh, assume the comp same for Jimmy? I can't hear you. you You're breaking up. Repeat that. I'm assuming that the compensation. Jimmy and Baker, which one would you want? I think I would go Baker over Jimmy G. Just because he's younger and yeah, I, I think he maybe. does offer offer a little bit more. Yeah. But that being said, I still would not like to trade away. That being said, these are if we're gonna make a trade, I think Gardner Minshew for like a fifth or a fourth, because they traded for a six, so you they want mm-hmm. more than that. <laughs> Sure. I would take that because he's on a rookie deal. You know, he's shown it. And you're not expecting him to back up the Brinks truck in a year or two for him. Right. Uh, Here's another name I haven't really heard a lot of. Jordan Love was a first-round pick. He hasn't been able to show anything because he's backing up one of the best of all times. Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, what would Green Bay want to get for him? Well, he was a first-round pick, right? Mm-hmm. What two years ago? Two or three, yeah. Yeah, um, I think they would probably want at least a second, maybe, maybe even a first. No, certainly not six. The sixth overall pick would be stupid. I don't think anybody would expect that. But um, I don't. I don't want Jordan Love. I. I don't think he's good. I thought drafting him there was ridiculous. Where they took him, especially with Aaron Rodgers already as their quarterback. At that made no sense to me. Um, so See, I hope that one doesn't happen, but I do think that they would want it. I, would, I think they'd want a second round pick for him. Cause I, I, I would be fine giving up a next year's third or fourth for him. Yeah. 
I don't think that gets him. I, I don't either, but it's <laughs> at least a, a discussion to at least call. But yeah, that I guess. Said, I mean, if you if you like him, I, I don't, I don't, I, I wouldn't want him. Not at that. You know, if you if it's the same money as like Gardner Minshew or something, or the same compensation, sure, take a flyer. But I don't. I, mean, wanna, I wouldn't want to give up like a second. I, again, I'm not saying a second. Yeah, but I'm saying a third next year's third or a fourth. Would you even want to give up a third for him? I, he's I guess had, a third. I guess a third. I mean, yeah, he hasn't he hasn't shown what Darnold's shown, where he's complete garbage. At least you're getting a, <laughs> somewhat of an unknown. Jordan Love, right? <laughs> yeah, you're like <laughs> at least he wa- he had talent to be picked because I do remember that draft. He was a late first round talent second round talent. So at least there's some building blocks there. And he learned from Aaron or he was sitting behind Aaron Rodgers to maybe pick up some things. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if they could get him for a reasonable deal. Um, yeah. you know, who knows what he's done when he's played uh, has not been super impressive to me, but again, it's here and there sporadic play. Who knows? Yeah. Not everybody's going to jump, come in and, and play a game like Patrick Mahomes did his first game, right? Correct. Where you auto, you look at it and you say, oh, sh- all right, well, let's just get rid of Alex Smith because Patrick Mahomes is really good. You know, not everybody's like that. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just really hope they don't go after Baker Mayfield. Like you said, I think he's mediocre. Um, I see a lot of people advocating for that. I think he would be a guy that would cost too much oh, yeah. in terms of trade for what he is. Um Jimmy G, I kind of feel the same way. Although I think Jimmy G, they, I think they want a first for him, which is, is ridiculous. But he is a quarterback that has taken a team to a Super Bowl and has taken teams deep into the playoffs before. So, you know, he's got that going for him. Um, certainly think he would be more. I, I would go Jimmy G over Baker if, if it was me. I know you said you'd go the other way. I'd go Jimmy G over Baker. No, um, don't want either. Don't want either. Either though, I really uh, want Gardner Minshew. That's who I want. I, I know you want Gardner Minshew, but if we're not gonna trade for a quarterback, because honestly, all those mm-hmm. guys, I'm not really excited. And giving up something is kind of risky. Mm-hmm. Why at this point? Why not sign an Andy Dalton, a Ryan Fitzpatrick, someone who has mm-hmm. starting starting ability, not a top tier quarterback. We know it. Probably not even top mediocre quarterback but at least he's a starting capable quarterback because i don't think darnold is even that for this year i I agree agree. and then and then try to work your magic get a bryce young or the ohio state kid next year i can't think of his name well so the reason why i think i would prefer specifically gardner Minshew over like an andy dalton or a uh, fitzpatrick even though you would have to give up maybe a fifth round pick to get him. Number one, a fifth round pick's not not much to give up for a guy that you at least know can be a backup quarterback on your team. Yeah. Okay. Number two, I think Gardner Minshew still has potential to be more than that. You know, I could see Gardner Minshew because when he's played, he's played really well. He just hasn't gotten an opportunity to, you know, start a full season really. Um but when he's played, you know, those extended periods of time, he's played well. He doesn't turn the ball over a lot. He makes good throws. You know, maybe he doesn't have the strongest arm in the world, but I think he's a good player. So if I guess I would put it like this, if you're going to draft a, you know, Willis or a Pickett or somebody like that in this draft, then I think I'd prefer to do a Nandy Dalton, Ryan Fitzpatrick signing, right? Yeah. If you're not going to sign a quarterback, or not going to draft a quarterback in the first round, that's your future, then I'd prefer to give Minshew a shot this year to see what he is. And then, you know, and then next year maybe you're in the same position. I don't know. But Andy Dahl and Ryan Patrick, you know that's not your future, right? You know oh, no. that those guys are just a one- or two-year rental. And honestly, with Matt Rule, what is he going to do? He's got to make the playoffs. <clears throat> I'm almost certain of it. Yeah. To- oh, yeah. To keep yeah. his job. So that yep. I was thinking those kind of guys can float this team, especially, I mean, right now the Panthers, I know we're talking to free agency here in a second, 
Terrar and Emstead still out there. There's a lot of other guys that are still out there that can really help improve this team. And they cleared all that cap space for Deshaun. You can use some of it for some good players. Yeah. Uh, you know, and honestly, just kind of putting a, a pin in the Deshaun, you know, discussion. Th- it's more exciting to me now that we haven't done it to look and say, okay, now we can be excited about the draft because if we traded for Deshaun, the draft would mean nothing to the Panthers mm-hmm. for the next couple of years, probably uh, maybe the next three years. Now, at least we can look forward to the draft. We can look forward to free agency. We've got money to spend. We've got draft picks. You know, we can manufacture more draft picks uh, as Fitter says. So I'm excited about that. Um, let's talk some free agent signings here that, that we have done. Uh, and we can start with now we, we did speak about free agent signings on our last show. So, you know, um, Corbett Woods, uh, we've already talked about them. We like them. Since that episode, we have signed Deontay Foreman, running right. back, who last year was with the Tennessee, Tennessee. Titans. Yeah. yeah. I honestly, I mostly remember him from being a Houston Texans and being yeah. a flame out. I didn't realize he had a solid last year with mm-hmm. backing up Derrick Henry. When Derrick Henry got injured, average 4.3 yards per carry, solid like you know, power back type of runner. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, because when it first signed it, I thought he was just going to be a bubble guy where, hey, he had yeah. talent at one time. And then I kind of looked in and I was like, oh, he had a really good season last year for a backup. And yeah, when we were talking about it, you were like, yeah, probably like a camp bubble guy. And I was like, oh, no, he's going to play. Like, he's he's on the team. I think He's fighting with Chuba, you know, for that main backup running back spot. And I think he's going to get it. But he's a guy that has starting experience, you know, like like you said, last year with Tennessee he filled in well for Henry. They kept winning games. Um, I like him as a. Uh, a guy that can fill in for CMC if and when he gets hurt or if they decide to put CMC more in the slot, put him more outside to kind of save those running back touches on him. You can put Foreman in the backfield and still feel like you can have production from that position. And, and not only that, you said that I think Chuba could still offer a lot, but mm-hmm. Deontay Foreman's a power rusher. That's something mm-hmm. this team hasn't really had since Michael Tolbert. Yeah. Good goal and John, back. And that's yeah. something that we we've talked about. CMC is not good at. Yeah. It, it's not his forte. He's a smaller back. He's a scat back. That's great out of the backfield to catch. And even once he gets to that second level, he's dangerous, but yeah. Pushing a pile is not his strong suit. And Deontay Foreman, I think, will really help this team in that type mm-hmm. of situation. So one year, $2 million, I think it's a really good signing for what we just explained. Power back <laughs> to spell Christian McCaffrey in those power sets. And, you know, him and Chuba kind of fighting for other carries. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, I like it a lot. Uh, I like this one as well. Wide receiver Rashard Higgins from the Browns. Uh, one year, one point one million dollars. Now, is Richard Higgins gonna be Robbie Anderson from twenty twenty? No, he's not. He's not gonna be a thousand yard guy, but he's gonna be what I think we expected Marshall to be last year. Ah, uh, see, I don't. You know? I think Terrace Marshall is gonna step up this year. That being said, no, I'm saying I've... I think Richard Higgins could be what we thought that Marshall was going to be last year. I hope that Marshall does step up, but I think Richard Higgins is going to be the third re- receiver on this team. I see. I think Terrace Marshall is, I think Terrace Marshall is going to get the third, but it's nice to have another receiving option besides, you know, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore, Terrace Marshall and Shai mm-hmm. Smith on this roster. You need more receivers, especially going yeah. in camp. I don't have her really high hopes on him, but one year, $1.1 million, I can't argue the signing. You need more mm-hmm. receivers in the <clears throat> hen house. So, I mean, he had 275 yards last year. Yeah. I, I, I think he was hurt it. some last year. Um, but I, I like him. I, I, I've i always liked him. I thought he gives you some options. Um, and as a third receiver, which I'm not totally sold on Marshall, um, as a third receiver, if that's what he is, then I'm, I'd be happy with that. Uh, who else we got, Jerry? We have Damian Wilson, linebacker. Uh, he signed a, let's see what deal, it just signed a two-year deal. It doesn't tell us the money part. Mm-hmm. 
it's all right. 75 yeah. tackles last year, 29 assists, one forced fumble. Outside linebacker played for Jacksonville. Just, I don't know, man. He he struggled against the run. He struggled against the ca- coverage. He was good against pass rush, or good with pass rush. That being said, it's just, eh. I think yeah. what we're going to talk about here in a little bit is I think it's going to be Shaq. Jeremy Chin is going to be an outside linebacker and Frankie Louvu. And I think, I think Wilson will probably come in and spell, mm-hmm. you, you know, the outside linebackers there a few times. Yeah, I agree. I, I think he's a, a decent depth signing. Wouldn't expect him to, you know, I think last year he had 106 total tackles or something is what I read. So I, I wouldn't expect him to do that again, but yeah, he's okay. Um, the next one I really like though, the uh, one that just happened just a few minutes ago, <laughs> just a few minutes, uh, defensive tackle, Matt, oh, Leonidas. Leonidas. Leonidas expected to sign a one-year deal <clears throat> with the Carolina Panthers. Yeah, it's good signing. Derek Brown is the only Derek Brown and Davion Nixon are the only defensive tackles. We really ha- worth anything on the roster mm-hmm. right now. Bringing a guy in who, yeah, what did you say, eight sacks last year? Uh, eight and a half sacks a couple years ago, yeah. A couple years ago, four sacks last year. Good pass rusher, needs to work on his run defense, 28 years old. Dude's, dude's stepping into the starting lineup. Derek Brown, Matt Leonidas is going to be right there. Yeah, he's, he's a pass rusher. Uh, pass rushing defensive tackle um, gives you, you know, average, maybe slightly below average in the in run defense. But, you know, we've got some good linebackers that hopefully can help with that as well. I like it. I think it's a good signing. One-year deal, probably not going to be a ridiculous amount of money. Um, I will be interested to see how much money it is. You know, is it $10 million? Is it $12 million? You know, is it the Gerald McCoy type deal? Kind of what I expect. So, yeah, I like it. Um, there was a, a Trey, Trey Boston, former Carolina Panthers safety, did tweet out today that there's going to be a safety signing coming up here today if, if everything kind of is worked out in terms of money uh, and that we're all going to be really excited about it. So, number one, I'm hoping he's not talking about himself. Um, <laughs> number two, he also tweeted that the plan is to move Jeremy Chin back down into the box and play more like he did in his rookie season. Yeah, and I loved reading that yeah. because yeah. I think that Jeremy Chin, as good as he was at safety, safety is just not an impact position. It's just not. I, it can it's, be like if you're Jamal Adams or something, but you know, I, I, Chin was more impactful out of the linebacker's spot, right? Yes. I, I just don't think safety – typically lends itself to being that type of big play type. Well, there's a reason that safeties are always available, right? There's a reason that that safeties that are average or above average, you can get them for pennies and they sometimes last into the season before they're signed. Correct. And what this does though, is it frees up Jeremy Chin to play more in the box, play more impactful downs. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get, hopefully get another good safety back there. And then with, Xavier Woods and your other signing, hopefully someone good. Yeah. You know, you you've shored that up, and then you have some money left over. Maybe sign Stefan Gilmore back. That way, J.C. Yeah. Horn, Stefan Gilmore, and C.J. Henderson in the slot. Him and or Troy Jackson. Pride. Well, Jackson is a free agent, so I don't. Th- well, I don't so see. is Stefan Gilmore. I'm yeah. saying you can you can re-sign either one of them. I don't see them resigning Jackson just because he's in the prime of his career. He's going to want big, big money. That's going to be his big contract. Uh, I I could see it. I could see him going either way. Um, I think the money is going to be similar for Gilmore and uh, Jackson, but um, neither one of them has signed yet. So who knows what what they'll get? But yeah, I, I um, just real quick. Uh, I know we were going to mention this as well, but Robbie Anderson's contract was restructured, freeing up around five or six million dollars more for the salary cap. So, you know, they're freeing up this money. They're going to spend it. And And I agree with you. I I really hope, I really hope that they bring back Gilmore. Um, He would be my first choice. Yeah, mine too. I think Stephon Gilmore, you could bring in for two, maybe three year deal. That's kind of the third year is really nothing, but 
you you spend some of that money, and then you let CJ and JC kind of learn from him. I I still mm-hmm. think that would be a great way to bring those two guys up. Yeah. And then once that contract's Absolutely. done, you're expecting JC Horn and CJ Henderson to be the lockdown corners yep. going forward. Hundred percent agree with that. Um, there were some guys that we re- that we did resign. Uh, mm-hmm. Safety Sean Chandler. Uh, you know, burgeoning special teams ace. I like that signing. Um, Marquise Haynes. Mm-hmm. You know, we lost Reddick. Um, you're going to see Marquise Haynes line up on the edge a lot. And hopefully, you know, he capitalizes on that promise that he's shown. Yeah, he's shown a lot of promise. And especially mm-hmm. in the pass rushing. And I like that signing because at this point, yeah. there's only Brian Burns. Etor hasn't really shown a lot in the pass mm-hmm. rushing ability so yeah we need yeah. someone out there especially you know tom brady sitting back there and deshaun watson will be deshaun playing watson. for a team yeah. so yeah they're gonna have to you know remember those speed defenses that we used to have when vic was in the nfc south mm-hmm. you know that's gonna be i think that's what we're moving to so i like marky sains a lot uh that was two years five and a half million by the way so another good deal and then they re-signed Zilstra as well. Um, he got the Richard Higgins deal one year, one point one million. So you know those couple of guys that are going to be you know depth wide receivers. Mm-hmm. I like it as well. So yeah, Zilstra showed a lot of ability when he's out there, um, making mm-hmm. sure-handed catches, not being explosive, but you know sure-handed special yeah. teams guy. Like it. Good. He's he's yeah. I like him. He's a good player. Um. So I guess what we're looking forward to here over the next week or so, I, I would expect the Panthers to uh, go in on another quarterback, you know, whether that's signing someone in free agency or trading for one of the guys that we talked about. Um, I would expect to see something happen here relatively soon. Um, Cam is still out there. Cam has been talking to Seattle, I heard. Um would be interesting to see if they decide to try to bring him back. I don't know if that's realistic or not. I would call up Jameis Winston. Me personally, I would reach out to Jameis Winston, just be like, yeah. hey, want a one-year prove-it deal? I know you had yeah. one last year with New Orleans and you got injured. Here's another place. A lot a lot is going to come down to what, what happens with Deshaun Watson because Winston has had an offer from the Saints. He has an offer on the table from the Saints, and he's talking to the Colts right now. Mm, um, I could see if, him wanting to go to the Colts. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I um, I also heard that if Watson goes to Atlanta, that the Colts are a trade destination for Matt Ryan, in which case, you know, Winston could go to the Saints. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely call Winston. I like Winston. Um, he's a guy that, you know, sort of in that Minshew vein where he, you could sign him and see what he's got. And maybe he becomes your, you know, longer term guy and not just a bridge you know so i I do like that and and he's obviously i think at a higher tier than Minshew because he's shown that he can do it yeah five thousand yards 30 touchdowns granted 30 interceptions but you hope you you always have to mention that right (laughs) it's not not just 30 touchdowns he did have 30 interceptions as well but um i think you you can hopefully coach that out of him he looked better when he was playing really good he was very efficient yeah very efficient so uh, I think that's going to do it, Jerry. Uh, not so, sir. Not oh, so. Okay. Before I we sign off, we did have a five-star review on Apple Podcasts with a comment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> From Sobe43. It's a long one. One of my favorite podcasts. I love how they really do a great job breaking down everything. They do a great job talking about who did well and who did poorly after games. I love hearing their insight into something I may have missed. I love like how they can talk about NFL generally, but still help us how it relates to the Panthers. And a lot of other podcasts for our team fade away are inconsistent. This one is there for you multiple times a week uh, during the season and multiple times a month during the off season. I'm glad I can depend on them. I know it could be hard to talk about the Panthers when they're doing so poorly. Yes, it is. Uh, but I appreciate the time and effort they put into the podcast. They keep it real every podcast. But they don't leave me depressed when the, the team struggles. I appreciate that. It's definitely worth subscribing to. Thanks for all you do, guys. Go Panthers. Thank you very much, Soby. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. That's That that encompasses the podcast. 
Yeah. <laughs> We're just going to copy and paste that for our summary from now on. That's perfect. Yeah. The yeah. better than I think the summary I wrote before. So, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, all right. We want to thank everyone for listening. If you like the show, please let your friends know. Please follow and subscribe on YouTube. Please follow us on Twitter at Meow Mix Podcast. If you have any questions or comments, you can email us at mailbag at meowmixpodcast.com. And if you leave us a five-star review with a comment on Apple Podcasts, we'll read it on our show. And we'll be back next week. We're going to get back to our draft profiles. Uh, I think uh, Hamilton is our next one, the safety. Um, and uh, again, whatever free agent signings we have, you know, quarterback news, all that stuff, we will definitely be back to talk about it. So until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding. Thank you.